happen here. You know? This is your first time here, Dan? Yeah, yeah. I've been, been here three days, two days in Paris. Uh, what two days are we here. Guys? We're with Thank the. You. And, um, um, and then the first time I was here yesterday, I took pictures over there. Maryland. And I am Mike, We're and I just saw my father's name with a couple other people that I know I haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, his name is on the plaque, and I was just. Uh, he never told me about that. You know, he was. Uh, he didn't consider himself a hero right? in any, any way, or any response. He, he sort of yeah. like disrespected the fact that he thought he was a hero and uh, he didn't want people to think he was. He just uh, he enjoyed coming here because he wanted to make sure he uh, that the people in the United States didn't forget what happened to his uh, comrades around, especially around this bridge, especially on this side. It's, it's quite the a tanks story. Were over there and there, just beyond that, and this was flooded at the time. Uh, because they flooded it from down here and brought it back up this way uh, so that less people could travel and they could see people coming across the rivers. So they had scouts looking around. But they still took over the bridge and kept the uh, Germans from going easterly. And that was the key. You know? But in about a three hour time window, uh, th 336 guys lost their lives. And there was about 14, 15 guys that were still left. And that one of them was my father. He shot from this point here. Mm -hmm. And one of these, you know, this area here, and he shot from these houses and this in the cover of this. But this was too close to uh, tanks, but they finally got the tanks out. Uh, and then they started to uh, head on the little bridge. But uh, 336 guys in three hours, that's a lot. That's just too much time. Every minute or so, every couple minutes, there was somebody being killed. It's just phenomenal. It's one of the worst tragedies of the world. A war because of the amount of people who killed in a short amount of time. This is your, and you said this is your first time here. Yeah, I remember here. against the war for 40 years. That's okay. Now I understand why it was coming. I understand. Really different and opposite from what I was thinking and, and uh, <laughs> what he was talking about. But he learned a lot of. Uh, his key was to find information out where people were strategically placed, what happened to them, who they were and where they died and if they lived and where they went to if they were shot and injured and what happened to them you know, over the past years. We were on the plane with him uh, in St. Mary Glees before and when they jumped. Because they weren't supposed to land in St. Mary Glees. They were supposed to land outside. But the, the leader got lost in the fog and uh, they went different directions. Once they saw lights, they just had to they dropped them. There's only one way to do this. And uh, he, because he was the first man to land, it's because his chute didn't open. The static line broke his chute, his uh, pulley or something like that. Didn't pull the chute open, and he was falling as he was pulling out his chute. So he landed really hard. He landed in the garden. That's why the, the noise woke up the lady in the window. She came out, and I've met her four times in my lifetime. Her husband was the mayor of the town, Madame Simone Renault. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I met her son. In fact, I just saw her son a little while ago. We went into the town to get some bakery, the same Anglis, and uh, I asked him to show me, uh, I asked my friend uh, Rudolph to show me where the uh, uh, Henri Jean Renault lived, because that was the boy that was my father met when he came back after the war. And uh, he had called while we were in the phone, and we were sitting right in front of this house, and as we got the call, the cell phone. And he was asked where I was with Dion, and, and uh, they said, well, we're outside. He says, where? No, we're in front of your house. <laughs> we were passing. We got the call, so we pulled over. He came out and said hello, and we came back here. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool timing. You hadn't been to this site, but you, you were aware of where your father was in this area, in this area right? Yeah, yeah. Lafayette. In Lafayette. Lafayette yeah, Lafayette Bridge. So you had always been aware of that. And I know that he was instrumental in that Iron Mike statue being put up too. Yeah, financially. He? Financially getting them. Yeah. Same with uh, um, the C-47 in the Museum de Paris Troupe and, uh, and also the museum itself. Uh, with Yves Terriel, I think, was taking care of the C-47 part of the plane when they used that on the 50th anniversary of D-Day. You know, that's when they flew over. It was the exact uh, plane that was in that moment on St. Marguerite's. So they found it, bought it, and then um, was it? Uh, then they disassembled it and took it somewhere, and then brought it back and reassembled it inside the museum, even though it sticks out. 
I don't think my fellow found enough investors and, to help cover it. But that's years to come now. We can always add. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have much time now. I have to get ready for Th these people. Thank you so much leave. for sharing, uh, for talking with me. We'll I really talk appreciate again, it. I'm sure. Yeah. My name is Dion Murphy. I live in Bonita Springs, Florida. All right, um, Dion. I'd, I'd be glad to communicate.